Hi everybody, today I am going to go ahead and show you how to install VirtualBox guest editions on your uh, newly installed Kali machine. So let's get to it. I can start it up from here. So, yep, there we go. No need to use a terminal to start it. We already have it installed, so let's boot it up. I already have my VirtualBox guest editions installed. And the reason why I installed them before I gave the instructions and not went along with it as and not recorded as I actually did it the first time around. Well, uh, the screen is really small and it's kind of hard to squeeze things in there. So I figured I would install it, uh, expand the screen, and then show you on a full size screen uh, all the things that you need to do. I just think that that's a little bit more efficient uh, for you to be able to see everything as opposed to just looking at things on a really small screen. So let's go ahead and log in. Hopefully you agree with me. There is nothing different that you need to do. It's like absolutely the same things. So uh, let's go ahead and fire up the terminal. Expand it. I'm gonna zoom it in so you all can see like these big chunky letters and let's go ahead and type in apt-get update and up and then apt-get upgrade. I've already done it so it shouldn't be long for me. Just gonna check. Uh, but this is the first thing that you should do aside from checking your internet connection of course. Uh, with a ping, so if the if the ping is functional, it's all fine and dandy. Uh, now the next thing that you need to do is basically just type in app dash. Okay, well, let's go ahead and clear the screen first. App dash cache search header grep dash i Linux and then type in uname-r and let's match the output of uname-r to these Linux headers. So it's 400-Kali1 AMD64. 400-Kali all, 400-Kali all AMD64. Meta package. So we can go with the meta package uh, or we can go with the specific one. Let's go with the meta package. I'm pretty sure that you would be able to go with both of them. There we go. Press enter. Working, working, working. Anytime now, my good man. Anytime. I know it can be a little bit tedious, but no big deal. And after you have done all of this, uh, now you're gonna, just in case, just in case, repeat this again, app-get-update and app-get-upgrade, just in case, because you wouldn't believe how many problems arise from just not staying up to date with packages. And now we're gonna reboot the machine, so just go ahead and reboot it. No big deal, should be relatively fast, shouldn't waste too much time, and then afterwards we're going to install the guest editions, reboot the machine one more time, and that will be the end of it. That is literally all that we will need to do, nothing else, nothing uh, super important there. Okay, so go, go, go. These messages can be a little bit annoying. Uh, I think you can make them go away if you just click the other thing aside from the X. So let's go, let's go, come on, anytime. Ah, uh, hate waiting for these things. So, next thing you need to go is to click on devices and say insert. Yep, so mine is already inserted, no big deal, but for you it will insert it. And there's there's no point to insert it twice, I mean I could technically remove it and then insert it again. Don't think that there's much point in doing that. So just go ahead and do this, cd uh, oops, media cd 
CD-ROM 0 LS and there you go. Then do CP VBox Linux editions to uh, wait root desktop and I already have them there but you will be able to copy them. I'm not going to copy them twice. That was the command that you needed to run. Then go over to uh, root desktop do ls you'll see virtualbox guest editions and here i can run them one more time no big deal it's going it's going the installation is going to go forward shouldn't take too long again i know i know it's a little bit tedious to just wait through these things but hey okay building the headers for the current kernel were not found Okay, so yeah, this thing, these things can happen, but no big deal. It should still run through the whole process, and you will have like 99% of all the functionalities here that you will be able to utilize any way you choose and please. As long as the full screen works, and as long as the connection works, and as long as the copy-paste works, you are good to go. Okay, so there you go. That is all you needed to do. Now all you need to type in is reboot, and upon reboot you will be able to use your VirtualBox with full screen and pretty much all the functionalities that it has to offer. By the way, at the end of this, I really like did not expect things to work out with Fedora 22, with Kali 2.0, or with the new VirtualBox, because all three of those systems are practically brand new, and... <laughs> Uh, things with systems that are brand new tend to be buggy, tend to be problematic, and so on and so forth. So I really didn't expect things to work out, but for the most part, they did. Anyway, I bid you, I hope that this was first useful to all of you who were struggling with this setup, and I bid you all farewell.